say mommy ear reaches over and she's telling the A to say A in the word vase. Oh, Hurry if I have the four and sold out. What it else? Has a five star review. It has a five star review. And seven more is 17. And this is just reinforcing the team number and how a team number is group of 10 and some more. Whoa. Our astronauts in training. And that's so cool. Hi, sweet friends. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Maylene Call from Mrs. Call's Campers. If you're new here, I teach first grade in Las Vegas, Nevada. I forgot to talk to you guys this morning, so it's actually after school. I'm about to head out. Um, today was a pretty typical standard Munye. Munye. Munye! That's what we call it around here is Munye. In case you're jumping around or you missed the past couple of vlogs, we are learning about space. We've been learning about space for about three weeks. So we're finishing up the unit this week. Today we were working on ads for telescopes and uh, then we're gonna be going into the moon and the cycle of the moon and all that. Not the cycle, the phases of the moon. If you're learning, you are? Up on the card, ready? In, in, in. in. Spell, spin. S-P-I-N. Good, can we spell the word spinner, like a fidget spinner? Hold on, can we? Yes. Yes, we can, check your ending. Spinner, ready? Wait till I point. You need to be looking too. Ready? S P I N N E R. Spinner. Ed, ed, ed. Ag, ag, ag. Okay, listen to this one. This one's tricky. Spell drag. Ready? D R A G. Drag. Nice job. Am, am, og, 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 odd, 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 eb, 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 on, 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 im, im, im. This one's tricky. Spell trim. T R I M. Trim. Beautiful. Ready? Say it. Stepping. Ready? S T E P P I N G. Stepping. Good That's job, Abram. Q I say that. Mm -hmm. All right, we have a new skill we're going to be working on this week. We have. It's definitely not lunchtime. We have learned this before, but this week we're going to really, really dig in, and we are going to become mommy e detectives. Okay. So, who can tell me the story about Mommy. sweet little Mommy E? Raise your hand if you remember the story. And we talk about her all the time, but this week we're really, really, really going to practice her. Whenever Mommy E is at the end of a word, she's going to reach over to the vowel tell that vowel to say its name and then she covers her, mouth. covers her mouth. So listen to the words sit and sight. Which one of those words has a strong superhero vowel? Hold on. Do you know in your brain? Tell me in three, two, one. Sight. Sight, sight has a strong superhero vowel. So who is at the end? Mommy. Mommy. Okay, ready? Listen to the two words. Mope, mop. Which one has mommy E think? Three, two, one. Mop. Ooh, listen. Mope or mop. Which one has mop. mommy E? Mope. Mope does because it's a strong superhero. Oh, saying oh. We are going to look at some words today. I want you to make sure you're sitting on your learning leaf and you haven't scooted to someone else's learning leaf. We're going to look at some words today and we're going to decide whether or not they need mommy E. Are you ready? 
Okay. This is a picture of a what? Bag. A bag. Say bag. 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 Let's stretch it. Ready? B a g. Do you hear a short and lazy A or a superhero A? Short and lazy A. So we would spell it B A G. Do we need a mommy E there? No. no. Otherwise, it'd be big. I big. Yeah, I like that word. Ready? This is a picture of a pad. Pad. Say pad. Pad. Stretch it with me. Pad. Give me a thumbs up if you think we need mommy E. Give me a thumbs down if you think we don't need mommy E. Good. We do not need mommy E for this word. It's just a CBC word. This is a picture of a vase. A vase. Stretch it with me. Ready? A. Thumbs up if you think we need Mommy E. Thumbs down if you think we do not need her. Why do we need Mommy E? Because, because, A, is saying, because A is saying its name. Because A is saying its name. Mommy E reaches over and she's telling the A to say A in the word vase. Let's sound some out. Ready? A. Or do you think it's A? Whenever the superhero foul is making it superhero sound. Turn and tell your friend when we use mommy E. I got such a good Turn and tell your friend when do we use mommy E? Can you under, huh? Tape that out of your mouth, please. Now, who can remind me? What a contraction is. I only see one hand, but I know you know. Yeah, it kind of makes words shorter, right? So it takes how many words? Yes, you put words together. Good job. So if I want to put the word it and is together, which letter am I kicking out? This one? This one? Yes. yes, if I take this one out, it becomes the words it. Yes. But what do I have to put in the sky? Do you remember? A, a little like a comma. It's like a comma, but we call it in? Apostrophe. Apostrophe. Good. It is really it is. The second one said this. Good. We're just going to, oh, hold on. Yeah. Underline the whole word with your orange crayon. There's is a contraction. Which two words did we put together? There is. Let's see if that makes sense. There's a fog. There is a fog. Does that make sense? I. Beautiful first grade. I am good. So we've talked about seasons. We've talked about, so I guess it's been longer than three weeks because we did seasons a little bit before. We've talked about seasons. We've talked about daytime and nighttime. We've talked about the earth and the sun and the moon and the patterns and we've done our songs. And last week we started making telescopes. They'll finish them probably on Thursday or a different day. Um, maybe this week earlier if we have more time. But one of the things I wanted to do just for fun was have them create like a little advertisement on why people should buy telescopes. And I was gonna do it last week, but one of my kids broke their wrist. So we just made cards for that student instead. All of them were worried about him anyway. And I try really hard to remind myself that these are six and seven year olds who care about their friends way more than space you know what i mean also one cool thing is our motto this year for our school is relationships over everything so i know i definitely wouldn't have like gotten in trouble for like skipping a writing lesson to make cards for a kid who literally broke his wrist so that was last week good writers use it Opening. good writers give three Reasons. good writers use a Closing. let's practice writing one together what are we trying to sell a telescope, a telescope. so miss call could say for her opening i could say Wow, you could need a telescope. a telescope. I'm gonna try that. I'm gonna say, I'm a writing superstar. Five big goals I know by heart. You can oh, mommy, you got it. Wow, you need a telescope. Why do I need a telescope? 
telescope, Miss Paul. You can learn about Earth. What's another reason? Yes. The moon. Those are good reasons. Go back and check. Wow, you need a telescope. Then you can learn about Earth. It helps you look at the moon. One more good reason, good reason. See things far away. It's a way. Okay, good ready, Shisa. Closing. I told them you need a telescope. Then I told them three reasons. So how can I end it? What can I say? Miss Cole. Hold up. Um, Let's come up with some. You need to buy this. You need to buy this. I love it. What else can I say? This is the best telescope. You need to buy this. This is the best telescope. What else? You should buy this telescope because it, it helps you. Yeah, but gave reasons why. You need to buy this. It is the best telescope. What's something else I could say? This is the best it's telescope. This is the best telescope in the universe. Hurry, come buy it now. Come buy it from my store. What it else? Come, it has to come buy it before it Oh, Hurry and buy it before it's sold out. What it else? It has a five star review. It has a five star review. Lots of really fun ways. Okay, so this is supposed to be a fun advertisement. Super fun. Say fun. Say fun. Say fun. Say fun. Okay, I'm the only one I'm going to put up here to help. Time. Tell and go. Okay, so you're going to need the word telescope. Um, if you want the word, this is really, E-A says E, really, what else, what else, what other words do you put with? Like when you buy something with money, it has a U. When you buy something with money, it has a U. That's buy. Anything else? If I give you a paper, I want you to go to my table. Otherwise, I'm going to leave the papers up here. I want you to use nice handwriting. Really think about what you're going to say. And don't forget your name. And don't forget your name. Wow, you really need a telescope. Oh my gosh, this telescope is amazing. Have you ever had a telescope before? Yes. I bet you really want a telescope. Let me tell you about my awesome telescope. We're going to be reading Little Boo, um, and it kind of talks about like the life cycle of a pumpkin. We're going to read Pumpkin Jack on Halloween, which is on Monday, so that's one of my favorite pumpkin stories. But we're going to be reading Little Boo this week. I couldn't find it. I swear I bought it last year. Don't know where it is. Our library doesn't have it. I checked with like the kinder team. They don't have it either. I don't know. Today, I just read Stumpkin, which is about, I think I shared this with you guys last year, but it's about a little, also this was donated by Karen, so thank you. Um, a little pumpkin who is missing his stem and nobody picks him, and then at, at the end of the book, the shopkeeper decides he wants to keep Stumpkin, and he doesn't get to go in a window, and the kids are like, oh, that's so sad. And then you see darkness, and then you see one eye, and then you see the other eye, and their reaction to this was the sweetest thing ever. I love reading this book. So read it very slow and dramatic. They love that book. Anyways, we're reading Little Boo this week, so we're also going to be talking about the pumpkin life cycle this week. Eight, Eight plus four, four equals a number. number. Is my number going to get bigger or smaller? Bigger. Bigger, because we're doing... Addition. Addition. Our number's getting bigger because we're doing? Addition. Addition. What's my first number? Eight. All right, I want you to count with me. Seven. Eight. Eight. How many do I have in my 10 frame? Eight. Is it full? No. No. How many more am I adding? Four. I'm adding four more. Count with me. One, two, three. Four, good. Eight plus four equals a number. Say it with me. Eight plus four equals a number. When you were in kindergarten, did you talk about how ten was a really friendly number? Yes. Yes. I know it. We're not playing right now. Is Miss Call being silly or serious? Uh, Eight plus four. Our ten is a friendly number. So to make this problem easy for us to solve, we could count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. We could do that, right? Would that be correct? Yes. yes. 
but we know 10 is a friendly number. So what do you think I could do to make this easier to count? Wow, lots of hands. Okay, what do you think I could do? You can say, if you have like four equals eight, you can like say 10, and then you're adding like four more. Oh, she said I could use 10 and add some more. I love that. So what would I need to do to make that happen? You're on the right track. Do 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. What do you mean? Yeah, we could say 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. What can I do to make this easier to count? If I know 10 is a really friendly number, how can I make that a 10? How can I make it a 10? So if you did 2 to the Eight Wait, if I give what? Two to the eight. Two? That would be... To the eight? Yeah. And then that would be ten. That would be ten. I want you to think about what he just said. If I take these two. And I fill it in here. Now I have ten and two more. And I know in my brain, ten and two more is what number? Twelve. 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 So I can actually make this problem easier if I fill in my 10 frame <coughs> first. You want to try another one? Yes. We're going to do 6 plus 7 equals a number. How many do I need up top? Um, that, um 6. 6? Or I could do, someone said 7. Six. Why did you say 7? I could do 7 first. Because when I do addition, does it matter which order I add it in? Because it says move them, flip them. Move them, flip them, switch them. If I start with seven, it would be faster than starting with the six. Good observation. All right, I have seven. Down here I have one, two, three, four, five, six. What do I need to do? I fill in my? Tell me. I want to fill in my? So it's easier to count. count. Help me fill it in. I need one, two, three. Now this is a ten, and this is ten and three makes thirteen. Oh, what? Why can't you use eight first? Could I use eight first? Would that save me some time? Yeah. Yeah. Five, six, seven, eight. How many do I need on the bottom? Six. Count with me. One. Good. Who wants to come and make this easier for us to count? First. I have eight. And then six more. Six more. So we're going to fill in our... Ten. Ten. So it's easier to... Count. Good. Can you take one from here and fill in our ten frame? Is it full now? Yes. Are you ready? One. Ten. 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 And four. Four more is... Fourteen. Fourteen. Say 10 is a friendly number. 10 is a friendly number. Say 10 is a friendly number. 10 is a friendly number. For math, we're starting addition 220. So today we were working on how 10 is a friendly number, and we worked with adding two single digit numbers and then filling in a 10 frame first to count them because we can recognize that 10 and some more is a teen number and we can add that in our heads really really quickly so we just practice adding with 10 frames to kind of show what that looks like because when you're adding numbers within 20 you're gonna get a teen number so showing them to like fill in the 10 frame first kind of builds that concept in their brain it's the next day my SD card was saying or my camera was saying my SD card could not be accessed and I needed to format it I'm scared I lost everything, but I played with it, and now it works again. So, it's the next day. I don't even remember what I was talking to you about or if it saved or not. I am very excited to wear sweatshirts again to school. This one I made, it's in my Etsy shop, but I drew it on Procreate, um, and I sell a couple of them. I haven't worn my shirts a lot this year because my school has like three days a week where we're supposed to wear our school t-shirts and so I just don't want to wear t-shirts every single day. <laughs> Me and John went to our first Golden Knights game last night and I have to say they have really good like cinematography and I love the way they tie in Vegas to the games and it's like a lot of really good like graphics. However, the energy at a Predators game in Nashville is so much better than a Golden Knights game. So if you're a Golden Knights fan, 
I'm sorry, but predators are always like, the whole crowd is always going. And the Golden Knights game last night, I don't know. Energy was kind of flat. I sent out a wish list to my parents on Saturday morning, I think it was. Yeah, Saturday morning and letting them know that we were going to be doing a space day. And here's just a glimpse of the message in case you're curious how I phrase it. And this is something that I sent out to my parents because it's not something that I wanted to spend a lot of money on and buy myself. However, a lot of the items I put on the list are reusable. So I'm not buying like Dollar Tree tablecloths. Not, I'm buying, but I asked for like the waterproof kind that I can reuse year after year so I can save it. So it'll be like a one-time purchase kind of thing. So I got some packages this morning. I want to show you um, some things that my parents sent. So first thing, like I said, and I think there's more coming tablecloths that can be reused um number one so i don't have to like always waste butcher paper covering my tables but then i can also hang them up front to kind of cover the whiteboard and give it like a more space effect less like we're doing writing and this and that and this and that like just space so it makes more of an impact i mean you don't need me to tell you that so tablecloth i have a blow up earth and moon i don't know if you can see but they are inflatable earth and moon pieces. They sent lanyards. I made little astronaut ID tags for my kids and I'm going to, well, hopefully a parent can laminate them. If not, I just will. And kind of hole punch them and then they get to wear the lanyard. This I'm excited about. Um, it is a star projector. This is one of those things that just sets the tone. Again, not something I would want to like buy with my own money just to have, but if a parent is willing to donate it, it would make it extra special and extra awesome. So I got this. And then the last thing is a little, it's like a toss, like a cornhole board game, but it's like a pop-up cornhole that's like space astronaut themed. And I was thinking I could use this in a couple ways. I could either use it as like a math game or I could use it as like answer this question and you get to like toss it and get a point. And I got two so we could have like two teams going. Yesterday one of them brought me these and I'm excited for this because it's got the whole solar system as these little stress balls like this and they're labeled too. But it also has these cards and they can like put the planets in order and like learn facts about the planets. So I'm having an exploration station that'll be part of that. Um, let me know if you would like me to put some of these items that I have for like transformations in my Amazon storefront and make a list. That way, if you want anything, you can just add it directly to your wish list and you can see everything that I asked for. Um, I also want to say I have worked at Title I schools every single year I've been teaching and a lot of people are really quick to say, oh, she's so lucky that she has parents donate this or do that or do that. And I'm going to be honest with you, it 100% depends on the year. Some years you will have parents that want to go above and beyond to help you. Some years you'll have one or two parents. Some years you'll have no parents. It 100% depends, but the only way that you're going to know is if you ask. If you spend one year at a school and people just say, oh yeah, like the parents won't help and they won't do this and you go along with it, you can't complain about other teachers asking their parents for things because you haven't asked yours. So if you are someone who wants to do something fun and you don't want to spend your own money on it, you shouldn't have to ask your parents because they want to help. So many of them really want to help. And you'd be surprised even if you send out a list and you know you don't have parents do it, reaching out to them, you're more likely to get more reciprocation in them asking like, hey, if you need anything, let, let me know. I'm going to go ahead and get prepped for the day and hopefully it'll be a good one. Don't mind the disco lights. They're still up from last Friday. I don't have a ladder to climb up there and get them. And I don't have batteries in my remote, so it's just a party. Long story short, it was one of those days where it was one thing after another 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 thing. After another thing. And if it wasn't this kid, it was this kid, or it was this kid, or it was this kid, or it was this kid. It was just one of those days where it was just a lot. And it makes it really hard, especially on weeks like this, where our weeks are short and especially when I have something fun planned on Thursday and we have to like really buckle down and get things done, but I have to stop. Um, so that being said, don't know how much I filmed for you. I did some small groups with some of my friends who are still doing like basic sight words, CVC words. Um, I'm going back to the cover up the picture strategy because a lot of them are starting to use that a little bit more. I'm really practicing it on the sight words that we see in those decodables. I see the... Not the... the a... a ha. What is it? Ha... Ha... I... I... Nope. 
No, don't look at me. Look at the paper when you read. Dog. CVCE words. Today the kids were building them, practicing adding E to the end and that it changes the word and the word's meaning. Some of these might be real words, some of them might be nonsense words. Help me, ready? G A T G A T G A T G A T G A T G A T G A T G A T G A T at hat hate it hit height height isn't a word but sometimes it can still help us because height is actually in this word What does this part say? Spite. Spite. Despite. Good. So sometimes that's why it can help us with our nonsense words because sometimes we actually might see them in part of a word. Are you ready to practice making C, V, C, E words? Let's see if we can get a spooky transition. Boys line, girls line. I want you to underline the vowel. Good, what's the vowel? I. I, good, I says eh, eh, eh. Now, I want you to make this word say bite. Good, what do we need to add? Mommy. Mommy E, she reaches over and tells the vowel to say it. Name. Name, wipe it clean. Write the word tap. Uh, good. Can you make this word say tape? Say escape. Escape. Syllables. Escape. Syllables. Escape. What goes over here? S. S. But I can't just put the letter S because every syllable needs a vowel. So what vowel am I going to put here? E. E says eh, eh. Good. S. Cape. Ooh, can you guys finish this word? Escape. Can you finish that word? Escape. Escape. Hmm. Escape. 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 Nice job. Help me spell cape. Ready? C. P. Escape. Good, board check. Wipe it clean. And then we did centers for my reading groups. It was really nice because one of my groups I was doing this book with, this is a, this is a decodable by Hello Jen Jones. And they did a good job with it. And I'm really impressed. They even like paid attention to the endings and the words. Um, and then I did a writing with them to see if they you know could transfer that skill into writing. Two of them did not, three of them did, so couple things here and there but that one will the other group um, we practice reading and some rhyme magic words in here practicing decoding these and then again I had them write it and they, they did pretty well in small groups today we're really working on our transitions that's why I have spooky great transition jar up there and you transition so many times during the school day from this activity to that activity from going in line and getting out and doing this and that but they get so distracted going from one place to another and I just need them to just do it and go <laughs> because we do not have 
a million minutes in our day to waste for transitions. Um, after lunch, we did our science. So we actually talked about phases of the moon. I did a brain pop with them. Did not have a ton of energy, but the brain pop video is actually pretty good. And it explained how just like the sun shines light on the earth. And so half of it is light and half of it is dark. The sun is also shining on the moon. So half part of the moon is illuminated and part of it is dark and when it's nighttime on earth we see the part of the moon that is illuminated but it doesn't always look the same so we talked about the phases of the moon and we did the easy and the hard quiz they really liked the brain prop qu brain pop quiz on there but then we just finished up our telescope writing so the writing portion was not linked directly to the video we did today but tomorrow we're going to go a lot deeper into the moon phases and we're going to finish it on thursday um because moon phases are not something that <laughs> the first graders need to know exactly but you still need they still have to be introduced to the concept of like the moon has like a pattern and why it looks the way it does so but towards the end of the day here i mean my patience meter was like in the basement <laughs> it was so bad and i we like barely did any math because it was so rough but the math we did i'll tell i don't know if i got it filmed i'll see you could do eight and then you could count four more i could i could say eight nine ten eleven twelve what's even faster than that um you can take two and put them up here and then you can do ten eleven twelve he said i could take two and move them up here and fill in my ten frame now i know i have how many at the top Ten. I want you to move and fill in your ten frame. And four. How many do we have at the top? Ten. 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 Is your ten frame full? Yeah. How many are at the bottom? Two. Two. Ten. And two more is how many? Twelve. 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 So what's our answer? Twelve. Twelve. Okay. Clear your counters. And I want to show you something. Look here. I had nine and I have eight. If I take this one. Did that help my brain? No, I need you to take it from the bottom. This top row should be full. Seven, so 10. It's 17. And seven more. It's 17. It's 17. I knew it. I'll show you what I did though, just because it's kind of hard. Yesterday we practiced this concept and I had them practice on paper with their 10 frames. Today what we did was I had them have just 10 frames in a math mat dry erase sleeve and counters and they all sat on the edge of my carpet so they weren't on their learning leaves they were all sitting like on the edge how do i move my hand this way on the edge of the carpet so i could see all of their boards and they weren't like hiding behind anyone else they were like miss call like we don't have a marker how are we gonna do this we don't have a marker but i did not want them to have a marker for this because i didn't want them to get caught up in tr like writing the equation and going ahead or doing this or doing that not giving them a marker and just having them use counters for this specific activity ensured that they were paying attention to me number one and number two they wouldn't like get mixed up or confused so with my marker, I wrote on the board the problem. So if we did eight plus nine equals a number, read it together, eight plus nine equals a number. We talk about which number we should start with, the bigger number, because it's faster and it's easier for us to count. Um, and yesterday we played around with that a little bit more because we would start, if I did four plus seven and I put four up here, and seven down here, it's faster to fill in this 10 frame than it is to fill in this 10 frame. So we talk about starting with the bigger number when we're doing addition. And I've already prefaced this because we've taught commutative property and how when you are adding, it doesn't matter which order you add numbers in. Um, so start with the bigger number. For this one, we started with a nine. So I had them all build nine. And something some of my kids are still not doing correctly is that when they fill in their 10 frame, they might go like this. instead of filling in the top row first. So I'm still having to go over that with my kids because it's easier to count when we can see a group of five. I fill in my nine up here. They fill in nine in their boards, just like that. And then I say, okay, how many are we adding? Eight, we're adding eight. I have them put it in the bottom 10 frame. So we both do eight together. So theirs matches mine. And then we talk about, we already talked about how 10 is a friendly number. Um, because it makes it easier for our brains to count. So what I have them do physically is fill in the 10 frame so that we are making a 10. And one of my girls today said, make a 10. And I was like, oh, 
yes! You move the last one in here, and we know this is a group of 10, and then we know this is seven. 10, I even had my little board up here, and I said it, 10, and seven more is 17, and this is just reinforcing um, the team number and how a team number is group of 10 and some more. So I do that just to kind of like reinforce that concept. But the only thing I had them do today was just physically move it and count it. And we only got through like four problems, but. And some of you might be thinking, well, Maylene, why don't you just have them put the nine in and then start right there at the missing box right here? And why don't they just start right away and put in the rest of it here? Because that doesn't, for them, that's not going to get the concept of when we add, it makes sense to group together numbers to make it easier for us to count. So nine plus one is 10, and then I have seven more. This helps them visualize that concept so that they can apply it when they are doing that mental math. But mental math isn't something that's necessarily, it's not natural for every kid. Some kids, eight plus nine, they can do it, they can memorize it, whatever. But in first grade, we teach them all the different strategies to add it, so this is a really big one. Number lines tomorrow, but I think I changed my mind because this week is so short. I think I'm just gonna do number lines next week and still like really practice with this. They're doing a good job though, but I feel like sometimes I get fooled in the beginning because they seem to have a really good grip on things and a really good handle. And making 10 is one of those things that it's like, it's a tough strategy. So I'm really tired. I'm going to go home. Okay, guess what? Miss Call found the book that I could not find. I found it. Little boo. It began to get cold. A snowflake fell close to the seed. And then another. And then another. What changed from here to here? Who can tell it? You're so close, not it summer. Was the earth, it was the earth. Yeah, you're right. It's fall. Good. I'm talking about because she raised her hand. Good. You're right. It's fall, and then it turned to what? Winter. It changed to winter. How can you tell? Because the earth is spinning because it went around the sun, and then it went far away. Oh, you're making a connection. Good job, because your brain. Did anybody else make that connection? Yes. Readers make. What do you think's gonna happen? It's it. now ejaculation. How did you know? I, I thought of it in my mind. You just made a really good prediction? Yeah, I was like, jack o lantern Yeah, said the cat. Good scaring, said the wind. Do it again. Boo, said the jack o lantern. Ah, oh, scream the goblin. Yeah, they're called vines. Kind of like how this plant, Miss Plant, Miss Call, Miss Plant, Miss Call's plant has these vines. They're spreading out. Kind of like poison ivy. It's candy. It's candy. Is that a watermelon? No. Does it look like a watermelon? Yes, but is it a watermelon? No. A tree. Okay, what did it turn into? A pumpkin. A pumpkin. I want you to look at your paper. Make it say seed. D. Good. Make a seed, then close the door. Little Boo was a seed. The wind blew and tucked him in with some soil. And he took a very long nap. And when he was napping, it changed from winter to spring. To spring. And when it became spring, he was reaching for the the warm sun. He was reaching for that warm sun. He was just a little sprout. A little sprout. Say sprout. Do you hear the blend? so close. Sprout! And then the other side, I'm going to glue on this little strip, just the strip. And I'm putting my waning crescent right on top. If you're not here yet, is that okay? Yes. Yes. Yeah. And then the cool part comes after 
you glue it. All right, ready? Watch Miss Call. This is how cool it is. Ready? One, two. Actually, you count me down. Three, two, one, blast off. Ready, go. Three, two, one, blast Wow. Wait, you think it's... Fold it I'll show you how to fold it. That was cool. Whoa. I'm folding this moon part back. And then forward in the back. And then forward. And then back. And then forward. And then back. And then forward, and then back, and then forward. Here. I'll let you open it. Hey, you did it. Hello, it is Thursday. I honestly cannot remember if I talked to you at all yesterday. Yesterday was not my most fun time. <laughs> the amazing thing is I reached out and asked a dad if, or I asked all my parents if anybody would come in and help hang curtains. And I immediately got a reply from um, one of my girl's dads and he came in and hung curtains. So he came in during their specials time, but then I just did math with them outside, which was interesting to, <laughs> to say the least. I like taking my kids outside to do basic lessons, but I don't know, this class, <laughs> I don't know. But the good news is these curtains block a ton of light. If I have time, I'm gonna put something to cover this window up here because I didn't want to get more curtains for that window because I can't open and shut them and I just didn't want curtains to be closed all the time. I did get some UV blocking, like a sticky sheet um, that should be here today, so it'll be too late. But I might try to put like paper or something to block it just for today and kind of see, I don't know. It would be fun without it, but it'd be more fun because we're like doing space. So um, I need to set up the room. I also made this shirt this morning. I just bought this SVG from Etsy. My hair has been straight all week, so my hair has no texture. So I actually do have some last minute things that I need to prep, but I can do that during my prep period today. So right now I just need to worry about getting the room done. I think they're gonna have a really good time. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, we are going to take a vote on whether or not we like moon pies. If you like moon pies, stand up. All right, we're gonna count them. When I tap your head, sit down. Not like moon pies, stand up. Let's count them. I like them. I actually got these moon pies from Tennessee where they make the moon pies in the factory. Now I want you to look at your astronaut tags. Not in training. Mine says astronaut instructor. Your tags, if you pull right here, what could happen? Break it. They could break and Ms. Call can't fix it. So don't pull on them, okay? You can look at them, but don't pull. If you need to hold something, you can hold this right here, okay? Should you touch anybody else's tag? No, because no, that's not. Because it's not what? Safe. If you need to hold on to it, you can hold on to the black part. Don't pull on this because it'll break, okay? All right, so you guys today are astronauts in training, which means I'm the instructor. <laughs> which means you need to learn what it takes to be a real astronaut. Uh, what plants? The sun is gonna burn out my plants. I need to be careful. I don't need them to be busy. Are you ready to learn about what it takes to become a real astronaut? Yeah. Our eyes forward. We need to fly our ship back to Earth. Get ready. Buckle in. Buckle in. That was a. I think that was a nebula. Do you think? An astronaut does. What do you think their job is? What do you think they do? They get in a rocket ship. What do you think they do? They, um, they explore planets. They explore planets. Wait, I mean, like, um, scientists, like astronauts help scientists yes. like, go into space and they get information. Oh, you're right. They go into space to get information. What else do you think an astronaut does? Can go under the tent. We're not going under the tent right now. Thank you for asking. Um, what else do you think an astronaut does? What's their job? Up the moon. Yeah, they put a flag on the moon, right? And they explore the moon and they look at the craters. They probably measure them too. Let's hear about what astronauts actually 
do. What did we learn about astronauts so far? Uh, astronauts wear special <coughs> suits. How? What is it like in space? Black. It's dark. Yeah, for the sun. Like your what, what about the temperature? It's super cold in space too. What about the oxygen? The special suits help them breathe, right? There's no oxygen in space. If you don't have a spacesuit, are you going to be able to survive? No. No. What else did we learn in the video? Yeah, it's called a tether. Their suit is has like this tether that connects it to the space station so they don't float away and get lost in other space. It's endless. Sometimes that's their job, and that's the hardest part of their job is going out on a spacewalk, right? Being outside of their spaceship. Are you ready to see what it's like to actually be inside the spaceship? Yes. Is that real? having fun floating no. around in zero gravity. That is. Or having the most spectacular that's view of the real? planet anyone's that's real. ever seen. Believe it or not, from eating and brushing their... How long do they work out for? Two hours. Imagine going to PE for two hours. Oh, that's do you think you would like space food? No. I don't want to eat that. No, no, no. No? This is what you guys are going to be making. Here's mine. Oh, can we do whatever we want with it? I would love to be an astronaut. I know it. I think it would be a hard job, but very fun. I would float around because there is no gravity. It would be cool to study space and planets. Being an astronaut would be cool. So here is, okay, so let's talk about what we know about astronauts, right? They train and they work. They work so super hard. They fly us spaceship. and they go on space, space walk, which is when you get outside of the spaceship. No, no it's not a good time. Space, there is no gravity. You have to? No. But it's really cold. It's really, really super cold in space. So, would you want to be an astronaut? What would you do? Would you like living in space? Whenever you fill up this page, I have extra pages for you. Just like our book reviews, I need you to take your time. The first question we're going to answer, we're doing this part together. The first question we're gonna answer is, would you want to be an astronaut? Space suits on, when I say that, you say shh. Ready, space suits on. Shh. You're gonna say if you would or would not want to be an astronaut, your first sentence, I'm a riding superstar. Uh. Full moon, right? This whole time the moon was getting bigger. It was getting bigger. It looks like it's getting bigger. Is the moon changing its size though? No. No, it's, it's just the what? Okay, the, the light. The light reflecting. Okay, the oh, when it gets smaller, we call it what? Waning. Waning. The new moon, the first quarter, the full moon, and the third quarter. We're going to do this as a group. Do I want you to go ahead of me? If it's hard and you mess up or your Oreo breaks, is that okay? Yeah. Yes, it's okay. Are we going to cry over a broken Oreo? No, because <laughs> no, guess what? It's going to break anyway because we're going to chew it up and eat it. So it's okay. Yeah. When we do this, I need you to make sure you're putting <coughs> super... Do you need water? No. Okay. Yeah. Super close attention, okay? Yeah. Can you do that? Yes. Yeah. When you go to your table, when one starts, they all... If we do not get done with this activity in time, we will not have time for the tent. So I need you to be super good listeners. You get to the tent, you need to pay attention. It'll be super fast, but you gotta pay attention. Gently take one Oreo. Watch me. We are going to make a new moon and a full moon. So when you open it, watch me. All you're gonna do is give it a gentle, gentle, gentle twist and gently pull it off. It's okay if there's a little bit there. All I want you to do is untwist. Show me your Oreos. Some of you have a perfect new moon. Some of you have a full moon that's missing a little bit. It's okay. Put your full moon where the full moon goes. You can take your fork or your knife and scrape it off so that it looks like a new moon. 
And if you want to, you can put it upside down. Miss Call has one Oreo that has a lot of frosting and one that has a little bit. Wait for me first. I'm gonna take my Oreo that has a lot of frosting and I'm gonna take my fork or my knife and I'm gonna cut it, oops, in half. And if it breaks, is that okay? Yeah. Okay, if I put it down here, it'll be easier. So I'm gonna scrape off half and I can put it, mm -hmm, I can put it on my other half. You have another Oreo if you need it. Go ahead and try. As long as you can build it. Hold on. Okay, here is the aftermath of Space Day. You just need to take it in. The tent, the planets we painted, I'm gonna cut them out. All of the things we did today. The asteroid game. The tablecloths just are, they're fine. Got paint. I've got our little constellations. Star background for the planets. Everything over here. The leakage here. I really don't think I filmed much for you today. To be quite honest, we were so busy. I barely had a chance to just like even breathe. Um, I'm actually really, really proud of my kids because they did, for the most part, a super good job. I felt like it was chaotic in the beginning and then we had a really nice like flow and then it got a little chaotic towards the end. But I think they had a really, really fun time. Nothing to these. At the end of these days, I always ask them, like, what was your favorite part? Just so I can keep it in mind for next year, like, what they liked um, and, like, what stood out to them. They really loved this little tent that a mom brought, and then everybody else just did everything. So I think they had a really good time. Their little astronaut writings came out so cute. I'm going to put those uh, on the bulletin board and put, like, the planets that we made above it. Yeah, okay, so things I liked. The asteroid game that they played was fun, but some of my, like, all-over-the-place kiddos, like, struggled with it. I think they... That's okay though. Write the room and then exploring with the different squishy planets went really well. So these that a parent got me from my wish list, they really liked playing with them and kind of setting them up on these little cards that came with it. Um, what was the other center? The other center was painting with me and then, oh, the orbit craft. And I don't even know where my example went. I think a kid took it, <laughs> but oh, they forgot to take theirs home. This. I showed them how to do beforehand and I knew I had kids in each group who could figure out how to help everybody else finish it, but having a mom after lunch come in and help them was a lot better too. So could all of my kids do this by themselves? No. Could a lot of them? Yeah. So I call that a win. The Oreo moon activity was really fun. We just did first quarter, last quarter, half moon, full moon, because I figured trying to get them to perfectly scrape crescent moons was not gonna be something they were gonna have fun doing. So that was a super quick, fast activity. We also got surprised today, every time I sit down, we also got surprised today with a little apple cart. So halfway through the day, I got a little, a little snack that I'm still working on. Now we're in cleanup mode and I get to get ready for a trunk or treat. Okay, I just glued down all of the planets and the sun and they look so good. So I cut them all out about the same size they, well, I mean, I'm not perfect, but. And that's so cool. I'm home. I do not usually finish out my vlogs at home, but it's been a long night. So we had trunk or treat after school, which means I was at work for like 13 hours today because I got there before school, so. Oh, it was so fun though. Um, I had my little light up cowboy hat on. I'll put a picture here of our first grade team. I wanted to be corn, but some of us wanted to be like something cute. I wanted to be corn. No one else wanted to be corn. Woo men was an option at one point. That didn't happen. So we ended up being space cowgirls, but I love this shirt. I think this shirt um, will be super cute to wear. Get my double chin. Will be super cute to wear. <laughs> um in the future so that is a win for me trick or treat was just so much fun i love seeing the kids like i said in the setting that's not like in our classroom and they run up and they hug you and they're super sweet and we actually had one of my sweet girls leave today halfway through the day during space day and she's going to disney world not disney world sorry and she's going to disneyland and i will also be in disneyland this weekend so i might see her there too so 
that is exciting. Some of you are probably like, Maylene, that's not exciting at all. <laughs> oh, also, these are my earrings from Altered State, but like their sister store, Arula or something. It's like connected to the store. That's where I got these earrings. We hung out, we passed out candy. First grade is so funny because we get in these like really like silly giggly, just a silly goofy mood. So it was nice to like be able to leave the school at like 8 p.m. but still be in a really, really good mood. So yeah, I'm just having... I'm kind of like riding the high because it was actually a super good day. Like nothing went terribly wrong, which is good. <laughs> if you're a teacher, you know what I mean. Um, and then to, to stay after school and still be in a good mood leaving was fun too. So I hope you guys enjoyed what I could show you. I know vlogs lately have been kind of all over the place, but I am just a human out here doing my best. So like this video if it was helpful. It might be Christmas before you see it, but <laughs> Halloween's on Monday. So subscribe to the family so you maybe don't miss a future video. But I'll see you in the next one.